One great thing about Nevada's Valley of Fire State Park is that even though it is a very large park coming in at around 46,000 acres, you can still see most of what it has to offer in a single day if you plan your trip right. We went ahead and put together the ultimate driving guide to help you plan that perfect trip. Now please note that this is a driving guide, so it doesn't involve epic hikes that the park has, like Fire Wave or Pastel Canyon. But you can find videos for both of those on our YouTube channel. So if you're ready to get this list started, which I'm sure you are, we're going to start at stop number one, which is the Beehives. This unique geological feature resides about a mile and a quarter after the front gate of the park, so it's the first thing that you will encounter. If you are a geology buff, then Valley of Fire State Park is going to be like heaven for you. The beehives are a series of tall sandstone formations that have been shaped by the elements. In the parking lot, you'll find a kiosk with a whole bunch of information about how they were created, and if you take just one look at them, you'll see where they got their name from. This is going to be a very quick stop, but it is definitely something cool to see, especially if you've never been to the park before. After you leave the beehives, you're going to continue on down the road and keep your eyes peeled for a three-way intersection. Here you're going to make a left, and that will bring you to number two on our list, Addle Addle Rock. This stop on our list is not only for geology fans, but for people who like sites of historical significance as well. If you climb your way to the top of this staircase that has been very tastefully matched to the surrounding rocks, you will find yourself on a platform with a great 180 degree view of the valley. And that is not the only star of this spot. You will also be able to check out some petroglyphs that date back over 4,000 years. I have no idea how the Native Americans got all the way up here to draw them, but I definitely appreciate the effort. Our next stop is just a very short distance down the street, and it is the Arch Rock. Even though this arch isn't anything to write home about if you've been to places like Sedona or Arches National Park, it's something cool to see if you're in the area already. You can easily see this arch from the car and grab a quick picture on your way to destination number three, which is the Fire Cave and the Windstone Arch. This is one of the stops where I would actually recommend spending some time because not only do you have the very cool eroded fire cave, but there are tons of other rocks in the area that have very cool unique erosions. This is a very fun area to just walk around and explore and it's also extremely photogenic. When we were there we spotted a couple doing their wedding photos just behind the fire cave and I can't blame them one bit, this area is really pretty. After you're done at the fire cave, you can head back to the car, continue on down the dirt road, and it will dead end at the main road. You're going to make a left, which will actually take you back past the road that you turned on to go to Adelaide Rock. You're going to drive past the visitor center, and soon you'll end up at stop number five, Seven Sisters. The funny thing about this stop is somehow we didn't get any pictures of it, so a huge thank you to fellow adventurer Deanna for sending us these shots. This spot is a great place if you want to stop and have a picnic. They have covered picnic tables and restrooms. The Seven Sandstone Towers are also a great place to get some shade if you visit on a hot sunny day. If you continue on down the road in the same direction, you'll eventually get to the back entrance of the park. There's a small parking lot there and that is where you will park to visit the Elephant Rock. Now I know we said that there weren't going to be any hikes on this list, but at point three of a mile round trip, Elephant Rock is hard to consider a hike. And not only do you get the Elephant Rock, but just outside the parking lot, there are more fun sandstone caves to explore. If you climb up towards the top of the caves, you can get yet another beautiful overlook of Valley of Fire. The hike to Elephant Rock is really simple. It's well marked and it just traces along the shoulder of the road. Before you know it, you'll be at the Elephant Rock. Please note that this formation is very fragile. Do not climb on it or it could break. After visiting with the Elephant Rock, you are going to hop back on the road, but this time in the opposite direction. 
you are going to make a right turn like you're going to the visitor center and this will put you on Mouse's Tank Scenic Road, otherwise known as the White Domes Nevada Scenic Byway. This one's a little different from the other items on the list because it's not as much of a spot as it is an entire road. This drive is absolutely amazing as it snakes its way through the mountains and valleys. On overcast days, the colors are so saturated that it's hard to believe that nature can actually produce them. If you love taking landscape photos, this is a perfect road for it. There are a lot of spots where you can stop on a hilltop and take a photo of the road as it vanishes way off into the distance. Speaking of great hilltop photo spots, right along this road, you can find number seven on our list, the Rainbow Vista Viewpoint. This spot is an iconic photo op, and chances are if you've done any research on Valley of Fire, you've probably seen a shot from up here. If you have a fear of heights, this one could make you a little nervous. It gets a little bit narrow at the top, and we could see a little bit of apprehension on the faces of some of the visitors up there. The walk up to the top of Rainbow Vista is definitely going to have you breathing a little heavy, but trust me when I tell you, it is worth it. If you're looking for a great thrill on your trip to the park, you can make your way all the way to the very top of Rainbow Vista. It's very narrow, but the view is one of my favorite in the entire park. Last but not least on our list is just down the street from Rainbow Vista Overlook. It is Fire Canyon or Silica Dome Overlook. This is another quick stop with a really easy to reach overlook. One thing that I find so interesting about the Silica Dome Overlook is how precise the line looks that separates the large white boulders from the mountains that look like they're almost made out of chocolate. And that is going to wrap up our driving guide of Valley of Fire State Park. We hope that you found it interesting and it'll help you make the most out of your next visit. If you enjoy our videos, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified when we make new videos. Check us out on Instagram at thatadventurelife underscore official. And for all the information about Valley of Fire State Park, including our official map to this driving guide, check us out at thatadventurelife.com.